Okay, success lesson number whatever. I'm at Marlon Brando's private island here, and last night we're having dinner, and sitting right next to us is Leonardo DiCaprio with several people. Now the first thought that most people are going to have is, go over there and ask him, go over there and tell him, uh, you guys should talk about blah 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 blah, right? Because the first thing that most people think in that situation is, I need to connect with this person because this person is rich, famous, powerful, whatever, and that by doing so, it's going to help me further myself in my life and that, that you know, I can maybe, some of that money or fame or whatever will rub off on me just because I'm talking to this person. Do you seriously expect that somebody like that is going to say, oh, now that you've barged in on my private, like, being away from the world experience and you walk up to me and you, you say hi and, gee, you seem like a nice person. I've only known you for 30 seconds, but let me whip out my checkbook and give you a million dollars just because you seem like a nice person. Or even better, hey, let me call my producer and get you in my next movie. Or, hey, let's go hang out together. Let's go party together. Let's get to know each other. You seem like a nice person. That's what people fantasize. That's what they dream of. Oh, we're gonna hit it off instantly. Oh, that was a clever one-liner you gave me, so sit down, let's talk, let's hang. I do not purposely do that. And I never have and I never will. And that's the difference. This is something that most people will never get. And that's what separates a lot of the, the really well off from the people who are not well off. Because the thinking that the people that are not well off have is they're not well off because it's not their fault. That it's the economy, it's the environment, it, it's the government, it's just a bad situation. Uh, they've got the bad luck of the draw and that the rich have it made and that they take advantage of the poor and it's, it's all like I said in the first lesson was that it's excuses. Nothing keeps, is, keeps you more bad off than excuses. It's the worst thing and people like to always blame something outside of themselves and they also think that the help that's going to save them is going to come from out there, from someone else. Not themselves, it's going to come from somebody out there. And that is the, the first thing, if you read my book, The Prosperity Secret, the first thing you got to get rid of is that, that wrong programming because that's what's keeping you in that bad situation. Something that wealthy, successful people do to each other is they respect each other. The good ones, the, the norms, the ones who are really nice people. I mean, there's all kinds everywhere, but the point is, People who go up to other people because they're successful or famous, it, most of them do it out of desperation. They hope that person's going to set them free somehow. Even if, let's say, let's say that famous person gives you a check for a million dollars. Let's say they give you uh, the, the break you're waiting for, whatever it is. It's no different than the lottery giving you ten million dollars. 20, 30 million dollars, right? That's what everybody wants. Well, what happens to most people who win the lottery? 85% of all people who win the lottery, who get the money, who get their chance, they blow it within one year. Why? Because up here, they are not programmed how to handle it. They do, even if a famous person gives you the break you want, it doesn't mean you're going to be a great actor. It doesn't mean you're going to be a great money management person, that you're going to be successful at what you do. You have to earn that. You have to work your way up to the point. And when you get to that point, you don't need a rich, famous person to give you the money. You don't need a rich, famous person to give you that break you need. It will come to you anyway because you're ready for it. And that is so important to understand. Now, if he walked up to me and said, hey, how you doing? Who's that hot girl you're with? <laughs> you know, we would have had a good time. We would have talked and, you know. But I come here for the same reason he comes here. Matter of fact, President Obama came here uh, and he said this. He says, if Leonardo DiCaprio can go to that island, that private island, with all his girls and not one picture comes out, not one paparazzi picture, nobody knows what happened on that island, then I'm going there too. And that's why I'm here. You can walk down this entire beach and you don't see anybody. There's nobody. There's 12 islands here. 
Now another interesting point is this whole Marlon Brando's family owns a, a whole circle. It's a it's a ring. It's a ring of coral with ten little islands called Motus here, and nine or eight, eight or nine of those ten or nine of those twelve islands are protected. And Leonardo, one of the reasons Leonardo comes here is because he's part of a society, the Tetraroa Society, which protects those nine protected islands. No human being is allowed on those islands unless you're a scientist. Why? Because they want to protect the natural environment in those, they want to protect the birds and the turtles and everything. You cannot set foot on those islands. Think about it. Those species, in order to, if you really love something, you let it do what it naturally does. You set it free. If you love something, you set it free and let it do what it normally does. You don't interfere with it. So somebody who's dedicated his life to saving the environment, and by saving the environment, you leave the environment alone. You don't go into it and, and shake hands with it and go, hey, how you doing? Let's, let's party together. He represents a society whose purpose it is to leave things alone. Because that's how things thrive. I thrive the best when I'm left alone. I'm not a people person. I mean, I can talk to you through the internet, but I do not like being approached. Uh, I like to be left alone. I think best when I'm alone. I'm a, I'm a loner. I'm a lone wolf. I and Kara is too. We're very... It's, it's not really being shy, it's not being unsocial, it's not being that we're mean people. We just work best when we don't have like this distracting energy from other people uh, wanting something from us, asking us a million questions like, how do I do this? How do I do that? Hey, I love you in that and blah blah blah. You know, it's like, we don't need that. We don't need the pat on the back and, and the, you know, we thrive. My best ideas come when I'm left alone, when I'm in the corner at a restaurant and nobody talks to me, you know, at, or I'm at home. And so you have to be in your own element. You have to be in your own space to get the messages you need to make it in life. Stop waiting for someone else to hand you the golden key to get you there. The important thing is to realize you, the only one who's going to make you make it is you. Nobody's going to give you a free ride. And even if they did, it's probably going to back, it's not going to go very far because you have to earn it. And once you earn it, it's just going to come naturally and everything will work out the way it's supposed to. You know, they, they say if you hand someone a gift for free, they're not going to appreciate it. But if they work for that gift, they appreciate it a lot more. I've given some stuff for free to you know, people who were... This is another thing. Like People say, well, wh why don't you just give your information away for free if you really want to help people? Well, I did that. I've done that numerous times. Somebody was dying or they had some terrible disease or whatever, and I gave them everything they needed. I gave them the products and the books. Here, read this. Do this. You think they did it? People somehow subconsciously think if you give them something for free that it's not worth anything. It must not be worth much. But if they if they pay for it, if they really if they really want something and they pay for it, they earn it, they work for it, then they feel like it must be worth something because they worked for it. They there, there's some effort in there. And it's the same thing. The only difference between the two is the perception. And that's another thing I write about in both the prosperity secret and instructions for a new life. How you perceive things makes all the difference in the world. The thing is the same, but how much you use something, to what degree it helps you, and is all based on how you perceive it. You can use the most minimal thing that most people think is worthless to your advantage to make you successful. And that's what the, the really well-off people, the wealthy people know, is they look around the world and they see everything through a different set of eyes. They see things as, that looks like a bad situation, but how can I use that to my advantage to not only help myself, but also help others? I can make something out of that that's going to be useful, that I can monetize somehow, that I could, you know, somehow, and it's not always about money. It's about giving something out that the world and the universe gives you something back for you will be taken care of. And that's not always about money. You can be given whatever it is you need, transportation, homes, friends, jobs, without any money being involved. 
if you play your cards right and that's what I talk about so one of the important lessons in life and that's what this video is about is just because you're next to somebody famous or rich or a situation stop looking at it as ooh how can I you and I know what you just said the rich look at something as how can I use that to my advantage but that's not the situation here you don't use other well-off people like that it has to happen naturally and the same thing about when you use things to your advantage it has to happen naturally it's not something that you force it's not something you have to work your way into and butt into somebody else's situation or life and annoy them and and okay here's a good example um, you ever walk through a mall and you'll see an interesting store and you see some stuff in the store that's really interesting and you start to walk towards the door of that store and then you see the the salesperson come running right up like a car salesman right they come running right up and you immediately get turned off and you don't go in that store because you don't want to be Hey, how are you doing, sir? How can we help you today? Hey, can we suggest this? Can we suggest that? That's what happened. It, it's an immediate turnoff when somebody approaches you because you know they want to sell you something, because they want something from you. They want your money. It's the same thing with relationships. If, if, if somebody is hounding somebody else, if somebody is, is wanting you so bad and they, they call you and they pester you and they, they that, that makes you run away right I mean a stalkers make you run away if somebody's so obsessed with you you don't want them but once somebody doesn't want you anymore suddenly you wait you want them it, it's when somebody doesn't need you and doesn't really want you they don't care that's when you're attracted to them because people are attracted to confidence that's the most attractive thing that women will say about a man it's not how they look and it's not necessarily the money it's the confidence, the confidence that that man has in himself, that he's making it in life, that he does, nothing's going to stop him. He's confident, you know, that is, money comes and goes. But what people are looking for is somebody who no matter what they go through, they have the confidence, they're going to make it somehow, they're going to figure out a way to make it through there, because that's the survival mechanism that is, is, is desirable. You know, the, everybody goes through bad situations, but it's the attitude and the confidence that you're going to find a way out of that, no matter what it is. That's what the most that's what's, what's the most attractive to anybody. So, that's my lesson for today: is stop waiting or looking for something outside of yourself to rescue you, to give you that break. That has to come from you. It has to. And once you make it. Then the Leonardo DiCaprio's of the world will come, hey buddy, how you doing? You know, and you just hang out. And you don't, you don't give each other million dollar checks. You just hang out. For no reason other than to be friends and just chill, you know, talk about life. But you don't need money or phone calls or producers or, or anything. You don't need that. It just happens. And that's something most people will never understand. You know, they, they, they cannot leave that alone. They cannot understand the preservation of something that they admire by respecting their space and leaving them alone. And if that, if we go to like Bird Island, the next island over is Bird Island and there's a bunch of birds there. You're not allowed to go on the island because they lay their eggs right on the beach and it's everything. It's a delicate, delicate ecosystem. But if a bird comes over and sits next to you and says, hey, how you doing? And you go, hey, bird. Cool, have a conversation, enjoy each other. And then when the time comes, the bird just flies back and, and you live each other's life. That's how it should be. That's how the world should be. Everybody should let everybody live on their own, no agenda, no, you know, I want something from you. I want you to help set me free. We all just get along doing what we do. And things come and go, you know. I mean, relationships will happen. They will fall apart. And it's on the natural flow of life. And you're okay with that. You just let it happen. Whatever happens, happens. It's like Forrest Gump, you know. He met all these famous people. Didn't mean anything to him. It just happened. So, I hope this helped because this is a serious 
less and people are so desperate to wait for someone else to give them that thing. And I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, I, I would have just went up there and said, I loved you in this movie, in that movie, and gee, what do you, I'm so proud of you for being a member of the, the, uh, the Green Society and all that and going to the World Summit. And, you know, come on. He hears that every five minutes. You think that's really going to make his day? You're going to annoy the hell out of him no matter what you say. You got to wait for somebody like that to be intrigued, interested in you, smile at you, walk up to you, say hi, whatever it is, it's not your job to do the opposite. If you respect others, not only will they, but the universe, God, will respect you and give you whatever it is that you need to feel happy and be successful in your life. So I hope this helped. I will see you in the next video. So many lessons that people need to learn about success. But I want you to get there, but you can't just jump from here to here. You gotta, you gotta earn it, you gotta know, you gotta recognize the steps and know what to do when you get there. So I hope this helps, giving you this stuff for free. Everything that I is in my books, I'm telling you in my videos. Anyway, that's it, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.